Hey guys, Jerry here, and welcome to my Greg Tech Let's Play Prologue. This is not the actual series, this is a prologue where I basically prepare a base and do all the vanilla Minecraft stuff that no one wants to watch on YouTube anyway. So, the way I'm doing this is that I've started a local server on my computer and I'm playing off of that, just so I can potentially invite other p players to play with me at one point. Um, it's an option. I'm not excluding any possibilities, that's also why I have chosen some of the mods that I have in this thing. Now, the mods I have in this thing, um, this mod pack, custom mod pack that I've created, they've all been chosen for a particular reason. Um, either they're a mod I really enjoy, they're a mod that's really beneficial to um, the whole purpose of creating a let's play, or they just add a lot of interesting content that I can show you guys. Um, so I was thinking that I'd use some of the time while I'm just, you know, punching wood, um, gathering up the basic resources to actually tell you guys a bit about the different mods that I have in this pack. I think that's a pretty good idea. I need more wood. Um, first of all, there's the terrain generation. Um, I'm using two separate terrain generation mods, which, um, at f like, they're not um, competing with each other, so to speak. Like one basically creates a height map for the world, while the other one creates the biomes to inha inhabit the world. So they're not exclusive from each other. That's also why I've reckoned that they work so well together. So as you can see, I have biomes for plenty. That's why I'm standing in a well, that's a plains, but uh, right over here is a lush desert biome. Biomes for plenty is a mod that I think by now most people who ever modded their Minecraft are familiar with. It's considered a must by a lot of people because it just... It adds a lot of biomes without... with most of them not feeling too much out of this world, so to speak. They're, they don't feel foreign in Minecraft. So they fit in rather well with um, what is already in the game. And that's, again, part of the reason why I really love the mod. Um, it creates a lot more interesting terrain, it creates um, a bit more variation than finding desert after desert after desert and then a tiny forest once in a while. As I tend to with normal Minecraft generation. It, I don't know if it's just my luck or whatever, but in any case, normal Minecraft terrain generation doesn't agree with me. The other mod is the, in my opinion, by far the more interesting one. That's the one I mentioned that creates the height map. It's called Alternate Terrain Generation. Very simple title, um, and what it does is that it creates an alternative to the Minecraft Terrain Generation. Easy as that. So, as you see over there, basically all of the hills and the mountains and such are very smooth and kind of windswept compared to the extreme jaggedness that you normally see in Minecraft um, when there's a mountain involved. This is a good thing. At least it is for me. Um, I remember when I first played Cube World, I was kind of wishing and hoping that um, at some point Minecraft would um, have terrain generation comparable to um, what Cube World had, because the Cube World stuff was just so so very pretty. And this mod does it. It creates um, terrain which reminds me very much of Cube World indeed. And how's hello, Mr. Zombie. And in case anyone's wondering whether I am pl actually playing with Greg Tech, if you noticed when I crafted planks earlier, I only got two planks out of each piece of wood. So that would at least suggest that there's some sort of balancing mod included, and I do believe Greg Tech is to blame. Blame. Thank, whatever. Wh wh whatever suits your boat. Floats your boat. Right, stone pickaxe. Um, let's get some a couple more stone tools while we can. A couple of sorts. Seems like a good idea with this little fella here standing around. Now, to continue the whole uh, mod fi uh, talk here, as I mentioned, ATG, the alternate terrain generation mod, all it does really is that it basically creates um, some sort of. I, I won't be clever about, try to be too clever about it, but it creates a smoothed out height map that it then applies to the world. I believe you can even create your own height map and then tell it to use that 
to basically create the height and temperature and gradients, uh, temperature and humidity gradient out of out from. Um, so that's a really really cool addition. There are cows down there. I want those. Um, I mentioned something about temperature and humidity. That's um, basically it creates three separate layers. One is the temperature, one is the humidity, and one is the height. Now the height is completely independent of biome. Um, however, or rather, the biome is put in after all of the other generation. So first of all, it creates the the height map. Then, depending on, like it it it, it then chooses um, some points which acts as poles. So like you know, on Earth we have the North and South Pole. In here it creates uh, poles with, um, I think, about 10,000 blocks difference between them. And these are then the cold centers. And then between those it has a, a, gra a gradient switching from uh, cold to warm and to cold again. So that's pretty cool. That also means that um, f w in terms of biome placement, uh, you tend to get cold biomes lumped together and you get uh, warm biomes lumped together. So for instance right now, as you can see, I'm in a in a hot area because there is a, the lush desert. There are jungle trees, there are savannas um, with the acacia trees, that sort of thing around. So that, to me at least, suggests that I'm in a warm area. The last thing is the humidity, which also varies, but I think the humidity is somewhat more random. Like, generally it's, it's rather humid around lakes and water where the, um, the height is kind of low. So that's one thing at least. Uh, I should probably make a furnace with the rest of my cobble. Uh, and then the higher you go, the drier it gets, sometimes at least. Um, but like if you're in a very dry area, like I imagine I am in a semi-dry area here, there's a lake down there, granted, but... Um, there's also desert and savanna and dry grass, which isn't really too too lush. And then on on the other extreme, you have uh, sort of stuff like um, bayous and swamps and other sorts of very wet things that kind of oppose it. And then of course, um, with temperature, the higher up you go, like the on top of the mountains, it's much colder than it is down in, in the valleys. So most often you'll find, even in hot climates, you'll find mount mountains that are snow-capped. A bit like the Kilimanjaro in Africa, which is in a very hot area, but very cold on the top. So that way the terrain generation mod is actually really, really cool, because it makes the world a lot more, lot more predictable. It makes the world a lot more um, like the one, the one presented in Terraformacraft, which is something I really, really enjoy. Um, that there's some sort of predict predictability to the world, and it's made up of um, sort of logical choice of biomes. So after all the maps, the different height maps and temperature maps and humidity maps are laid out, um, the game then populates the different areas with biomes. Now, these biomes can be either rather big or they can be really small, depending on... Like, for instance, you can see this uh, Lost Desert here. It actually... it's rather big. Um, because it's so long that it stretches all all the way around the lake, but it's not unending. Like you can pretty much always see another biome from where you are. And right now there's a pretty much just this box standard desert here. You can get up on top of, and I'm gonna bring some cactus actually because I have I have a sneaking suspicion I might need that later. Ooh, clay, lots of clay. I have a, another sneaking suspicion I might need that as well. So up we go. Over the hills and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. Now, I'm not really interested in the hardened clay here, but the uh, the normal clay could prove to be very valuable to me, so I'm gonna grab all of that I can. Now this area really isn't uh, too bad, like in terms of looks. It looks pretty good. and But again, that's something you'll probably hear me saying about pretty much every area in relation to uh, to the ATG mod. Like, I just really love the train generation in general. And I think night is falling all around me. Zombies playing, having fun. It's the season for hiding in a cave. Happy Minecrafting, everyone. Yeah. Improv. Wood. Ooh. Cool. 
Now, I think I've talked enough about terrain generation for now. Um, let us move on to a different subject. I've included a bunch of different mods in this mod pack. Um, I'm not going to list them all in one huge list because no one's going to want to listen to that. Instead, I'm going to kind of go through them one by one and explain why exactly is this mod in the mod pack. Um, that's some that's something that I'm kind of missing from any sort of feed the beast or pre packed um, thing. That a lot a lot of them don't seem to have a reason to be in there. They're just in there to fill up, which is kind of sad, really. There goes my pickaxe. Luckily, I did manage to get enough stuff for a new one. Orange stain clay, hardened clay, cobblestone. There's some t sticks. Now, I'm gonna need some light first of all. So let us get that set up. I'm also going to place a torch outside just to have the vicinity clear. And a door, why not? Now, the mods that are in. I don't know if I should take them... Nah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and be somewhat logical about it. First mod I'm going to mention, Industrial Craft 2. Because Greg Tech is an add-on for IC2, um, it's kind of necessary to have IC2 in the first place. That seems to be a logical conclusion. Like, if if you want Greg Tech, you need IC2. That's that's just how it is. Uh, pork. Um. So yeah, I'm. I've enjoyed playing IC2 a lot in the past. Like, um, getting a solar farm set up. Um, experimenting with a nuclear reactor, that sort of thing, and we're most likely going to do that in this series as well. This upcoming series, rather. Not this particular prologue series, but the upcoming real Let's Play. We're definitely going to play with uh, nuclear reactors at one point. Um, but, basically, um, it's not a mod I have any sort of recent experience with. Like, the last time I played it was, I think, nearly a year ago, before we started any, any of all this YouTube stuff on either my channel or high stakes. It's been a while. So a lot of it I'm gonna have to kinda rediscover along the way. Um in terms of plugins for IC2, there are a bunch of them which are nearly always included in Feed the Beast packs and I have yet to find any logical explanation as to why. Stuff like advanced machines um does have its kind of purpose because you, of course you can get a mass rate which works faster. Um, but then again, Greg Tech has one as well. Um, it also has a mod that I, or a sub mod that I really, really hate, and that's Compact Solas. Anything that reduces the complexity of the game, to me, is a loss. If you want, um, compact solar panels, then you find a way to place them close together and minimize your cable management. Like, in real life, even though you say you have solar rays, but solar rays are made up of lots of little solar panels that are put around and then made to work together. And you can do that with just a box standard solar panel. Like if we have a look in here, solar. There's a solar panel here. It's a box standard solar panel. It gives out one uh, energy unit per tick, and it's made from a solar panel and an aluminium machine hull in an, an assembly machine, which is something new in Greg Tech that I have not seen before. But basically it looks to be sort of an auto-crafting machine that has some alternate recipes, which makes sense. That's kinda cool. Um, I don't know if making torches is particularly fun. But yeah, even this, it has... it actually has... I don't know if you can make these. I'm not sure you can. But uh, anyway, uses for solar panel. Um, you can also use the order dictionaries to change it around, but that's not something we have. So okay, so you make a solar panel by silicon plates, glass panes, electronic circuits, carbon plates. Okay, so these plates here, at least the silicon plates here, are rather difficult to make, and they need an industrial blast furnace. So you kind of need to get a lot of power before you can even start solar. So instead. Quite often, at least, you'd start out with um, stuff like the um, the wind power or the the water turbines, whatever. And that's, um, in my opinion, it's a good thing that you have a difficult way 
like you you have to you have some difficulty getting started. You start out by burning coal in a generator, and then whoops, why did I throw that on the ground? I threw it. Ah, I'm, it's because I'm not hitting the right spot. But you start out burning coal in a generator and kind of going through a whole industrial revolution, and then as you progress, you can expand or replace part of your energy creation with um, renewable sources, which don't use fuel. And that's cool. That's nice. That's something that you should definitely try to achieve. Um, but as it should also feel worthwhile. Like, if you manage to craft a ton of solar panels, uh, not that one. Uh, like, if you manage to craft a ton of these solar panels here, um, and you want to hook them up together, then the whole puzzle of wiring them together is, in my opinion, such an interesting part of the mod that it would be really sad for anyone to lose out on it. But unfortunately, this seems to be the case with a lot of the Feed the Beast pack, because it has the advanced machines and the uh, compact solars. People just completely miss the point of it. They miss the challenge. It's just not there. And where's the sun? Behind me somehow. And uh, north that way, east, it should rise over there. It should set over there. The moon is nearly down. I think since we have port now and beef, we can kind of risk just heading out, seeing if we can find a nice spot. Oh god, they all just spawned. So let us have a look. Over there on the other side of the mountain, there seems to be some normal trees. Um, I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna kinda go along the side here. I got a bit, good bit of clay. Um, we can always come back if we need more. But, but um, yeah. So, the only Industrial Craft 2 add-on I have is Greg Tech. And that's gonna be it. Like, Greg Tech has a lot of stuff. I ton of stuff. No doubt about that. Um, and I'm gonna try my hardest to explore all of it and kind of make sh f figure out exactly how to tackle this mod, how to make the best of it. And that's gonna be the challenge, and that's gonna be the fun, because it's a challenge. It's difficult, it takes effort. But because, of it, because it takes effort, it also feels rewarding. And because it's a logical puzzle um, that you need to solve, the the feeling of reward is increased even more. At least that is my um, perspective about it.